Greetings, you fellow lovers of pine and misery, and welcome back to Stellaris with me, Alathrix. And, of course, welcome to what is going to be a pretty brutal challenge run, which should hopefully be a lot of fun, even though it's going to be incredibly weird and against my normal instincts of rapid expansion. Today, we are doing the One System Challenge versus the Times 25 Crisis. That is to say, we cannot leave our system in regards to expansion, and eventually the maximum difficulty crisis will arrive, and it will be absolutely devastating, and we're going to be summoning that in at the year uh, 2350, at least that's how I'm setting it up, so the endgame crisis is also early. It's going to be pretty brutal. Now, to do this, we are going down the route of the corporate empire. I know I'm not the first one to do this challenge on YouTube, and I'm fairly certain a lot of them have also picked the corporate option, because it is just one of the better options here. You have the ability to make branch offices on other worlds without actually controlling them. We are also going to be going with criminal heritage, so we are going to get our money from destroying the economies and causing crime on other worlds. We're just going to be really annoying. But first, I think it's prudent we talk about the rules themselves so everyone's on the same page. The first rule, and the most important rule, of course, is to not leave your home system in regards to expansion. You can, of course, leave the system with your vessels, your science vessels, your military vessels, everything else, but you cannot take any other system at any point throughout this game. If any system becomes under our control, the run is null and void. The second rule is that we can build habitats. That is to say, we can still build habitats within our system and colonize them, we just can't leave the system itself. This will mean that overall, the end result of our system is likely going to be one arcology project world, which is going to be a size 30, thanks to life seeded, and then a host of small stations. These will provide some basic resources to the main world, but honestly, won't be adding too much. Most of our resource is going to come from vassals and from external sources, because we are creating heritage, we can put down a lot of branch offices, and since we don't have any extra influence needs, because we're not expanding, all of that influence is going to go towards these branch offices. Now, criminal heritage is probably not the best option here, because once you have vassals, you immediately have the ability to put down normal branch offices, so I think a normal corporate empire would be better, but this is going to be a lot more fun. Now, this final rule is one I kept changing my mind on, but this is a rule I'm, I am imposing on myself. We cannot become the endgame crisis. We cannot end the galaxy by going down the crisis progression path. I think this is definitely the smart play, because it ends the game before the crisis can really take hold in the galaxy, and definitely the smart thing to do here. But I'm not going to do it personally, because I want to see if we can face off versus the true times 25 crisis. That's the plan. Now we'll get into the game itself. Okay, one brief thing. So, Origin, we're going with Life Seeded, so we can have a size 30 planet, eventually becoming the Arcology Project. I do think that Shattered Ring might be a better option here, or even Void Dwellers, giving more options moving on, but I like the idea of having this super world in the middle of everything else, so personal preference there. We are intelligent, traditional, and thrifty, because extra unity and research are going to be so, so important. We won't be able to out-resource other empires early on, but we will be able to out-tech them, since we're going to be such a tiny, tiny little world, with basically no empire size, going with the aquatic look, and that's pretty much it for our empire. Mastercraft Inc. to begin with, so we have more consumer goods and trade value to make everything run a bit smoother, and then later on we'll move that over to franchising, because we do want lots and lots of subjects. Now for the difficulty setting. So we are going to be playing in a large galaxy, just a normal spiral galaxy. The crisis strength is set to maximum, the crisis type to random, mid-game start year is at 2275, which is of course early, and then significantly earlier, we have the end game start year at only 2325. This is far, far earlier than the default, and... I don't know if I'm going to regret this, but that's going to be a lot more fun in my opinion. As for difficulty, we are on maximum. The scaling difficulty is on mid-game, so by the mid-game, they get all of the cheating bonuses from the difficulty. They get the bonuses over time, and then all of them are, are applied by the mid-game start year. I'm also turning on the difficulty-adjusted AI modifiers. A lot of people have said they don't like playing with this, since it essentially allows the AI to cheat their tech. Um, tech gives them more stuff, but I think it gives the AI a really good fighting chance in the mid and late game, and I absolutely adore this. So it is on even for the challenge run. As for our growth, I am going to have growth required scaling set to zero. I've always done this because I like the galaxy to seem populated, and what this is, is the game slows down population growth based on how many populations you have in your empire. 
I've never enjoyed that. It won't really affect us in this run because we're going to have such a small population anyway, but it might affect the AI and make them a bit stronger. As for the logistic growth ceiling, we leave that as it is. That's what slows population growth as they get more and more numerous on the planet. With less base and less resources, there are less new people. And that is that, so lots of difficulty settings. And now we go into our single, peaceful, happy little system. Hi hey everyone, Future Lathrix here. So, this was my first challenge run and it was an absolutely enjoyable one. It was really weird and so against my normal nature to not expand constantly, but things got really interesting really fast with this run and I've got to be honest, I massively underestimated the power of the criminal heritage. I need to play around with that more, perhaps making a cult in the future. Now, a lot of you may have noticed there was a mistake in that previous clip of the difficulty. I accidentally forgot to turn on the advanced start of the AI. That's because I was messing around with something before recording and I didn't turn it on. Now that shouldn't have made a major difference in the playthrough anyway because Advanced Neighbours is set off by default so the first vassals, the first encounters we have would have went by normally anyway. So don't think it would have changed anything but certainly something of note. So this was the first challenge run. I really do hope you enjoy. This full playthrough took me a very long time to record and a very long time to edit down but it was a very enjoyable experience. So if you do enjoy these videos, likes and comments are very very welcome since this long form content is very, very bad for the algorithm, especially lately as YouTube continues to try and push shorts and smaller one-off videos. Any interaction really helps out and helps me continue to make these videos, which is the whole reason I'm here on YouTube. I really do hope you enjoy this video. It's something a little bit, a little bit different for the channel, but my stammer remains normal. So, back to the past and our tiny little single system. Oh, we're starting off in a nebula. Okay, so we are starting off in the very galactic core. What a beautiful start in terms of just the visuals. So we are starting off here, and let's just talk about our game plan then. Realistically, what we need to do very, very quickly is get to things like auto cannons, the tech which will give us a significant bonus in the early game, maybe even allowing other empires to follow us willingly. On top of that, we just need loads of science vessels, we need to find other empires, we need to start putting down our branch offices, we need to see everything. So expect to see lots of science ships. I'll also be going down the route of discovery in our tradition tree. With that, we'll be able to do map the stars. We do also want to get loads and loads of anomalies because we need every bonus we can get on our single little world here in the middle of a nebula. How many worlds do we have here? So one, two, that's an asteroid. Three, four, five, six. Ooh, that's not as many worlds as I expected. That's not many habitats then. At least I can put a habitat on this one here and then we can keep the ring on perfection. Did I count the one behind us? I don't know. Either way, it's a little bit of a sparse system. Really? The Ute. Okay, so... Wow, this is a... Gorgeous system. I love the nebulas. That's not really the precursor I wanted. Uh, so this gives us extra colonists when we first colonize new worlds. There is new I don't really care about that because at most we're having five or six orbital habitats. Not the best thing to see early on. That might be a little bit too expensive for now, but we have that for the future. Master's teaching philosophical mindset. I said that a bit weirdly then, didn't I? Either way, plus 10% research speed, but that's going to be later on. Right now we need unity for more science vessels. As you can see, we are moving out, discovering lots of stuff, lots and lots of anomalies because of Map of the Stars, increasing anomaly chance by 10%. We've just finished off Discovery, and of course, we've gone into a technological ascendancy. Tech is everything. We're also getting loads of stored research because of all the events going on. Uh, that I guess. Our neighbours have been found, and honestly, our fleets are looking pretty scary, but sadly, I can't go to war with them just yet, because I kind of forgot how this works. Yeah. So I need to just be stronger than them. Now, the other issue is, I think once I start putting down branch offices on them, I can't actually go to war with them, so that's going to be annoying as well. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully, I can get enough fleet power to scare them off. Again, I need to get autocannons. Oh, there we go. Autocannons are here. There we go. See, autocannons just have a really high base damage, which massively increases the overall damage per second. 
Again, early on, this kind of artificially inflates the power level of your fleet, which makes the AI very scared of you, which is kind of perfect for us. Yeah, I guess let's go with that for now. It's probably going to be quite expensive. Not as bad as I thought. So far, honestly, we're quite a scary little empire. Just that plus 10% early on, all of our resources going into this early stuff, so we're not building anything or really expanding for the future. That is helping us a lot. We will cure their ignorance. We will cure their ignorance. And also our little pirates here are just in the right place to start harassing their science vessels. Oh, we got bubbles! Lovely bubbles, you can go home and become an adult and a fearsome fighting foe. Situation more outdated. As you can see, we're getting so, so much um, stored research, which normally would be burnt through quite quickly, but because we have such a very small empire size, we still haven't hit 100 yet, we've got no modifiers to how much our tech costs, so it's going a very long way, and it is really catapulting us in this very early stage. Essentially, we're playing aggressively tall right now. Okay, let's move the ground forces in. Yeah, I can't imagine they're going to um, hold off for too long once we take over their worlds. And remember, landing on the world does not actually give us access to the world in any way, except for basically points in the war, so this isn't breaking our rules. We are victorious! Technology discovered. So we have our first vassal. Will they be loyal to- Ooh, no, they will not be loyal to us. Uh, do I have defensive overlord, such it was. Okay, so... I would actually like some of these to be loyal, because later on, over oh, to so weak, I would like to have the specialist vassals, but for now, I'll happily just be taking some of your money. Not as much as I expected. Now, thankfully, the Empire over here actually really likes us. They're cordial already. We basically bribed them into that, would they? Be oh my god, that is so close. They are super close to accepting us as their overlord. I did not expect that to just be like that. That's really cool. So what would tip them over the edge then? Right now, they're not accepting it because it's going to be distance. Ah, oh, distance is a major factor. Okay, I might mess around with that, see if we can get them to accept. Having a second vassal in the first 25 years would be insane. Now we're putting down our branch offices with loads and loads of smugglers ports. Each of these will increase crime by 50, which is pretty ridiculous, and also increase the branch office value. So all three of them are going with that to make sure crime is a thing. I've also popped down a satellite campus, which will start giving us some research. I was hoping maybe that we could become friendly with them and then that might tip them over, but I'm thinking war may be the only option. I'm currently researching the next level of the autocannons, and as long as I don't take a rare resource, I'm waiting until I can upgrade that. Also, I'm currently using nanites to increase our research speed, which is rather nice. Oh, that is so close. Yes, okay, how about one holding? Yes, even better. Just about accepting that. Oh, because they've moved towards us. Oh, them moving actually put that in our favour. So I've never really messed around with the um, specialised vassals before, but this just seems really interesting. So this will give them bonuses over time as long as they're loyal and it'll increase more and more. It basically gives them research at the cost of making them not very good at defending themselves. Then they'll feed us tech and later on we could even try and make them pay us as well. Or just make their diplomacy tied to ours if we want to become the overlord of the galaxy. Yeah, I'm very happy to accept that. Hopefully they'll accept that nice and quickly. There we go. And then for a while, they will be converting. During this time, we're going to lose influence. We don't really care too much about that, so we'll just leave it as it is. I could start putting down some Ministries of Truth, which would give us extra influence. But again, we don't really need it. What do I want? Uh, energy is always good. The aid agency will make them happy and give us unity. Actually, we do need unity anyway. Uh, I was going to go with just another satellite campus, because... I like the extra researchers early on, but you know what? Let's go with that. Make sure they're nice and loyal forever. Ooh, thank you for the unity. 
And that will be pretty much that. So currently we'd, we are now just finishing off Supremacy one more, and then hopefully we can grab one of the first bits of Ascension, either the Flesh is Weak or Engineered Evolution. We probably won't be able to go with Mind over Matter because we are materialists, so getting that tech is very, very unlikely. Okay, so the Flesh is Weak means we can't become Synths, but we can start that super early. I haven't actually gone down the Synthetic route since all of these got changed. I don't know. I really don't know. Okay, so the Rippers do cost rare resource, it turns out, but thankfully, one of the traders nearby can sell it to us, so there we go. We're going to upgrade all of our craft now with the improved auto cannons, which is going to make our fleet size look absolutely terrifying to others. Well, let's see if bribery continues to be the best source of everything in this game, eh? Will you willingly join us? I would love another science one. Okay, it's going to take a while. Well, we're improving relations anyway. Hopefully, we can start grabbing some of these soon. There's another empire over here which actually does scare me. They are militarists. But if we can grab this system here... Sorry, this empire here. We have this lovely block already under our control. Turns out Ripper Auto Cannons. Yeah, 10k fleets this early on. Enemies are pretty scared of that. I personally think they need to be toned down a bit in terms of the military power they give, because it's easy to rush this tech. And then, well, every other empire is very scared of you for a long time. The hierarchy simply hate us, so we are going to go to war with them. The empires over here, I've decided, are just going to be there to put down our branch offices for the time being, which is giving us so much energy, it's delicious. So yeah, we're going to go to war with the hierarchy to try and make them our next subsidy. Then hopefully convert them eventually into another science empire. Then I don't really know what from there. It's been a very good start, honestly. This is better than I could have possibly asked for so far. Our first habitat is finally going down. Our fleet's are in position. Of course, in the future, what we can do is change our agreements so that some of our... Subsidies or vassals or whatever they actually are at the time will join us in warfare. For now, we are still alone. We are basically acting as the enforcers for our little group of friends. Research project concluded. Planetary invasion successful. Oh, finally, we found our precursor. Why are so many of you just sitting there? And was no one... Why were none of you supporting the home world? When did that happen? How did I mess it up? It doesn't matter, it's not a big deal, it's not 10% extra research speed. Anomaly detected. Okay, there we go, so I wanted, so we have the core now. Yep, ship, uh, ship upkeep minus 20% when active, extra pops when establishing a colony, plus 20%... Oh, that's new. I knew some of them were reworked recently with the bigger um, patch. Energy weapon attack speed plus 20%. Neat. Although we are crushing this fight still, we actually lost a fleet a moment ago. It seems that the enemies are now starting to catch up. In fact, this federation over here is terrifying. They have a 30k fleet bouncing around, which I think is their federation fleet. So they are already strong enough to take me out. I will soon, of course, have the hierarchy here under our sway, and I'm now converting our first vassal also. Oh, it's just about to finish being converted into tech as well. We're also keeping the plus 30%. It turns out vassals are way stronger than I remember, to a kind of ludicrous degree. Having that one straight away has just won us this. Now, here's the question. We could very much start draining this empire as well. Oh, we're actually running out of influence. That's weird. But either way, we could start to drain some resources from them, but that would also slow down how fast they can improve their own worlds. And them improving their worlds is a big part of us getting stuff back. And they are starting to focus on tech as well because of their specialization. I'm tempted to have all three of these as tech. That may be silly, but I am struggling to get tech now. I am starting to st really stagnate in our empire, in our little system. The early game, this is a powerhouse of an empire. Later on, if we don't keep on investing like this, we're going to have problems. 
We returned the book. Got some more friendship from the realms, in addition to lots of money. The hierarchy is now under Lethrixian control. And boy, do they dislike us. It's going to be a long time before we can get them happy with us. Ah, oh, it's a lot of influence. Gonna do it anyway. Uh, what do I want from you? Do I want something to make you slightly happier? Or do I just want stuff? What does this one do? I've never seen this one before. Franchise Headquarters. Oh, that's interesting. Overlord managers turn consumer goods into unity and trade value for the subject, and unity for the overlord. Clerks produce one less trade value for the subject, and produce unity for the overlord. I wonder if that'll be on every single world, or just the home world, will that affect? I do need more unity, and that's actually a really interesting way. You know what? You're never going to be happy with us, I don't care, then you're just permanently going to be our money maker. Okay, a farewell later. Not all that much has happened. I have now got access to Cloud Lightning since we destroyed some, vi some Void Clouds. Our upgrades have been very lucky in terms of our cruisers. So now we have Max Rank Strike Craft, Max Rank Auto Cannons, which is making us seem stronger than we are, which is making things not really likely to attack us. I'm trying to befriend the traders over here. I'm trying to turn them into Federation members. They were just at war and they lost. Uh, they're one of the weaker empires nearby, so I'm hoping because of that my relative power can eventually get them on our side. The problem is distance. I'm trying to become friendly with them, but it's a real struggle. Ooh, they've changed their ethics. They were fanatic xenophobes. That changed at some point. I really would like them to be a Federation member. If not, we will have to grab them as a vassal. We do, we do have a defensive pact with them now as well, which means the other empires nearby will probably not attack them. Oh no, Crusaders, are you? That's a purifier species. Ah, that's why you lost the war so badly. Okay then. Well, that's uh, something to consider for the future. The humans just became a true empire. Hostile. Oh, but I really want you as a minion. Oh, it'd be so silly to grab. You know what? Too bad we're going over there. Fleet, please move over. We are going to pay a visit to the humans. They just entered space in a year or two. They'll be one of ours. If I don't even have a true station, I thought when they got uplifted, they at least got a proper station. Sorry, humans. Commencing planetary invasion. Well, they're disloyal, and always going to be disloyal. I think I'll keep them as pets. Uh, I'll change them drastically later on. I won't be taking anything from them. I'll change them to a, a a protectorate. I might even pay them. I'm keen to see what happens if we flood them with resource. There won't even be much, because they're just so little. And they can only grab two systems. Well, it is what it is, I suppose. Uh, return home. Our perfect world is now getting a little ring around it. And we're about to attack this here. I want to free up some space. So let's go after their fli- Actually, no, let's make sure they're all together first. Aha! Lathrix actually did a smart after doing a dumb. New technology discovered. Initiating evasive maneuvers. Yeah, let's clear these out. Not only does this give us some research to quickly grab, it also means we're then free to enter this territory nice and easily rather than going all the way around. In addition to that, it stops this particular group from being able to become the Great Khan. So it's one mid-game crisis prevented if we can completely destroy them. The rest are a bit strong though, so is, has that helped at all? Distance-wise, no, it's still minus 100. I wondered if because they couldn't get through that was doing something, but no. It's very annoying. It's very annoying. We might have to go to war with them to claim them. They've even broke the defensive pack. There's just no one friendly for, made, for me to make a federation with, and it's getting a bit light now in the game. I need a federation. It's going to help out so much. I knew it! It was bugged! I knew that 100 was wrong, because when I proposed subjugation, suddenly it was saying minus 500 from distance as well, which is just ridiculous, because we're not far away at all. I don't know what was causing that bug, but I restarted the game, and as soon as I did, 
Ta-da, we can make a federation. I could have been in a federation maybe for like the last 10 years, but I haven't because of that. I think it happened when they changed their ethics because they were really close to becoming a federation member then suddenly the distance modifier increased. I just thought it was because of the borders changing with one of our vassals moving in or something else. I just assumed it was something I didn't understand. Okay. So, we want the research cooperative. That's what we want. A trade league would be nice, but no, we want the research cooperative. There we go. Happy days. We have a federation. Diplomatic connection established. 2,270, our tech is still only at 2k, our fleets are good, our neighbours' fleets are also very, very decent. They're just a little bit weaker than us, even after losing all the wars. Um, our subsidies are also getting actually pretty nasty. This is the weakest of the three, and this one alone has in excess of 20k. And again, they're constantly feeding us research and resources, so it shows how, how powerful they're actually becoming. Multiple other empires have just gone absolutely insane. The Imperium is probably the scariest currently and doesn't like us that much. It doesn't hate us, but doesn't like us. The church over here is powerful, but thankfully does like us. So I think we're in a decent position. We have a big chunk of the galaxy under our control. The Federation is now starting to level up. And I am going into politics, <laughs> which should hopefully give us more stuff. Now, I... Oh, finally, the Archaeology Project. I was about to say I'm waiting for that. But also, um, I am tempted by the flesh is weak. We can't do the Arcology Project just now. A, we don't have influence, annoyingly. But also, I need to get all of these districts industrial or cities. So that's going to take a little while. Well, that's random. The Racket Tribes. Oh, hello. What? Why are they right next to me, though? Did you just split off from that other group? I mean, surely we should be strong enough to take them out, though, right? Let's find out, I suppose. Right, yes, it was you. So, if, if I assert... Yeah, it becomes my minion. That's fine, then. Yeah, they're strong, but nowhere near strong enough. Because they get given a fleet when they split off, I think, but... Okay, first we'll take out the station, then chase them down. Yeah, we're plenty strong enough to deal with them. I had to just force a defeat because I noticed something. We had weird claims all over their territory because we were the ones who were the primary target because of the whole overlordship thing. And I don't know if I would have got the system or not. So it's currently claimed by the Compact. But how it was being shown in the war thing hinted to me we might end up getting it if we had the systems. So I'm not going to risk that. I don't know if it would have happened. It might not have happened, honestly. We'll grab them later. They are super weak. We are far more powerful than they are. We can make them our protectorate later. Honestly, a protectorate's fine as well. Protectorates do give you um, influence at the end of each month. If not much else. So that's fine. Oh, also, these two are now warring with each other. Whoa. Okay, they're getting strong. What earth is that? Oh, this is a fallen empire. I thought this was a normal empire then. I was very concerned. We leave our beautiful system in times of war. So we're going to war with the giant federation over there because one of my vassals really, really wants all of this territory. And of course, if they have that territory, that then becomes my resources through their tributes. So of course, we're going to help out. I don't really know how strong they are. I know that the Imperium is superior to me, fleet power-wise. I know that the others are massively inferior. I think one's pathetic and then one's just normal inferior. And of course, we are all of these empires. We're going to try and conquer... Not as many systems as I'd honestly expect, but that's fine. The war's going well, although they do have a 50k fleet bouncing around. That's their Federation fleet. I think we should win, though, because of all of our forces combined. There's so many empires now on our side, all moving towards them. Yeah, we're definitely going to win this. Although, I definitely would have lost alone, so thank you to my lovely vassals. Now, something weird is this. I could now go, I could now go down the route of the Psychic Tree. I haven't been spoiled much for this, but everyone keeps telling me it is incredibly powerful, especially with the new telepaths. And if they can do modifiers to planets, you can imagine that putting them on the Arcology world would be fantastic, since we only have one super world. 
Plus, there is, of course, one of the covenants to give you extra research speed. I don't know how likely it is we can get that, but that or the Instrument of Desire, pretty much any of the different covenants except for the Eater of Worlds, I would love. So, we have until we finish politics to decide, but I'm thinking I might go down the psychic route, weirdly, psychic materialists. I blame the single rat. Little psychic rat. Now, another thing we have to decide- why did I build so many construction vessels? Anyway, another thing we have to decide is this. Which of the mega structures are we going to go with? We can only have one in our system. So the obvious choice is the Science Nexus. It'll give me plus 15% research speed and a nice chunk of research, which is really good since we have such a tiny empire size. Our tech is just really rushing ahead. Everyone is now pathetic in terms of tech compared with us, because although we only have 3,000, we have less than 200 empire size, so everything's so cheap. But there is also the Interstellar Assembly. Two extra envoys plus 40%. Oh, that is so good. Just a passive plus 40% diplomatic white. That would be insanely good. I do really, really, really want to become the custodian. Um, eventually, what I'm going to have to do with my minions is stop them having free diplomacy and make them vote with us. Essentially, they'll feed us their points. They don't have too much because they are vassals, but still... I think it has to be the Science Nexus, though. It just has to be. We are going to win this based on tech and tech alone, so... Get to work building a Science Nexi. Is it worth going Master Builders for this? I don't think so, just for this one thing. Ooh, Xeno Compatibility, that's interesting. I'm tempted by that right now, just the extra pop growth. Plus the upgraded species. Yeah, okay, so Xeno Compatibility. Once we finish Politics, we're going to Psychic. Then Defender of the Galaxy, and then we have two free slots to do whatever with. We were victorious, and we didn't really give our vassal that much, but you know, more space is more space. Was this the enemy territory? Yes, it was. Okay, so at least we got a world out of it. Lovely. In fact, was that two worlds? No, just one world. I think that's all you got from that. Still nice, one world, a couple of systems, all of that flowing to me. Time to bring this fleet back into the fold. You know, I'm starting to think we should have just won these wars, because, yeah, now I've done that, it's gone back to the original owner. I think I may have read into it wrong, and was just being overly cautious. Which, to be fair, I have to be right now. I can't risk losing this run after we've came so far to some stupid technicality of the rules. Which might not exist. Our world has been encased, and I'm going to go a little bit more heavy into alloy production right now. We're struggling to get our science next sunlight, and honestly, I need more fleet power, especially once I get the Imperial fleet being built. So this thing is really, really important for just resources. Our science is going to come mostly then from our habitats, which is alright. They have a decent bonus there, and we have gone down the route of Voidborn, so... Yeah, they're going to be more tech-heavy. Perfection is going to be more industrial and unity-heavy. Lovely. Crush them with our might. Well, that was just annoying. Anyway, continue. Let's remove these as well. Then both of the uh, Marauder groups in our territory are gone, so we don't have to worry about that ever raising its ugly head in the future. Ah, oh, but then there isn't a third one. We do kind of want a mid-game crisis, and I don't really want a, uh, a Vikend Empire. Well, that's a problem. So we do want a mid-game crisis, because that's the easiest way to get everyone to agree to make me the custodian. Yeah, that's gonna be difficult. That's the end game, anyway. Okay, now we've put down our relay, we'll get plus 10% from our researchers because we're connected to this one. I don't think that will work even when they connect to the others. Actually, will it? You know what? I don't know, so let's find out. Let's build a relay for them, since we can do that. 
Let's see, if we connect that, then technically speaking, the relay is going all the way into the Union territory. If that connects as well, I wonder if that stacks that effect. Well, it'll be nice if it does. We'll find out soon, I guess. The last habitat we're going to be able to build is now going down. On top of that, we are connected now to all of our vassals, except for the one over here. We're about to climb. Okay, jump on over. Go straight for their capital. Not a particularly large vassal, but one, two, three, four, five... I think five worlds they have, so it's something. So the forces right now at play are the Covenant, the Federation to our right, and the Crusaders. And then, of course, ourselves. They're the three, well, four major groups right now. The Union is now under one control. Lovely. Okay, what I need to do is get a construction vessel over there, and then we can build ourselves a gateway in their territory. So we have access to this area nice and easily if we would choose to go to war with the Dominion or any of these groups. Though I doubt it, honestly, at the moment. A lot of our resources are just coming from our branch offices, and I don't want to shut them all down to go to war. Clearly, if I if I had redone this run, I would have went to war a lot earlier and then started building the branch offices later. But still, we have plenty of vassals. We have this tiny empire up here that... I don't even know when this one arrived. I'm assuming... Yeah, it's going to all be claimed. So it's not going to become another uh, group. And look, there's Earth. Look how loyal they are. We can finally reach into the Shroud. And that's new. Through the Looking Glass. Whilst we have yet to actually pierce the veil, we can feel it getting thinner and thinner under the pressure of our combined minds. Yet, on the other side, our efforts to enter the Shroud have not gone unnoticed. Something watches us. Its presence radiates eldritch power and unfathomable purpose. It seeps through the cracks of our psyche. It barely notices us. It watches us like we would watch a drop of condensation. It might let us in, if only we could reach its mind. Well, obviously we're going to talk to it. Issues the special project, Commune with the Ineffable. Ah. So first of all, it turns out it looks like you always get a covenant at the start of the psychic tree now. But I don't know if you get another chance then. How has that changed? Because the Whisper is... Minus 3 stability, minus 7% monthly unity. Oh, that's changed as well. So the Whispers in the Void are one of the covenants I wanted. But... The Instrument of Desire is the one I want the most. Extra influence is great, extra research, but only 5 and 7%. Well, wow, it's very different to how it used to be. I wonder if other things happen later on then, because that is really weirdly different. Yeah, extra research speed is fantastic, so is extra influence. So we could go with this now, or we could risk trying to get it later, but it is already past 2,300 now. I think we have to accept this, sadly. I want Instrument of Desire, but we're going to go with this one instead. Okay, the Whisperers are now inside us, we get a little bit more influence, and a little bit more research speed. Psionics is finished, and I've gone with Shared Destiny, giving me two extra envoys, along with making our subjects happier with me. I've also now realised that telepaths are insanely powerful. Each one of them is increasing all resources on the planet by 10%, so we're getting a flat plus 20% on our Arcology world, which obviously is pretty amazing. Our economy is looking fantastic right now. I'm just in a weird position though. The free traders are equal to us in our own federation. Uh, several other empires are actually better than us at this point. I don't know how I'm going to become either the federation permanent leader or the custodian in time. I think I should have been more aggressive early on grabbing more vassals. We do have a lot of vassals, though, and again, we can, at a moment's notice, change so they no longer have free diplomacy, which means they have to vote with us. That would be a big, big deal. Why are you unhappy with me? Oh, the amount of holdings I've got for a start. Hmm. I could change some of these quite easily. Yeah, we can make you happy quite easily later on, if we so desire. Oh, right, yeah, there's also just pledged loyalty. Do you like moats? You do like moats, wonderful. I would like 18 years of loyalty, please. Who said you can't purchase everything in the galaxy? Go on, accept the deal, I want to see it happen. 
There we go. Time has passed since we established the foundation of a covenant with the Whisperers in the Void. Our bond is still weak and we still have a chance to break it, or on the contrary, strengthen our connection. We will confirm the covenant. Since Strikecraft are now considered a society research, I'm going with these type of ships. This way we can use our physics for energy weapon damage, our society for Strikecraft, and then our engineering for armour. That way we are constantly upgrading everything on this ship. It also means that we can very easily pivot this to be good versus pretty much any of the endgame crises. If it's the Scourge, that would be the best. Well, kind of the best, since we can use a lot of energy weapons quite easily along with our strike craft, and that's all against armor and hull. Against the Unbidden, we can just ignore their shielding altogether and go straight for their hull, which is deadly versus them. And versus the Contingency, yeah, once again, ignoring shields and armor is kind of the way to go with the Contingency, in my opinion. So, yeah, this is going to be good versus all of them. Not perfect versus the Contingency and the Unbidden, but good against both of them while also hard countering the Scourge. So we're kind of hoping for the Scourge here, but any of the three will be absolutely fine. Our fleets are starting to look really scary now. The repeatables are starting to stack up, and again, we are just such a small empire, this 9k tech is going so far, and we're almost hitting plus 200% research speed because of our deal with the Covenant, the fact we're in a science federation, and of course the science nexus which is now entering phase 2. Now we have loads of claims around here apparently. So this is going to be a long war, and hopefully it's going to massively benefit our vassals. Again, the more the vassals get, the more we get. Our bond grows deeper. Ignore the massacre happening in the background. Our understanding of our patron grows. We are no more than an afterthought to it, insects in its home, yet it has taken a liking to us, and on this occasion, it has bestowed another drop of power upon us. Our telepaths are now more closely attuned to our patron, and we have been inspired to create a monument to celebrate our covenant, a place where our best telepaths can try to commune with the whisperers in the void. Our telepaths now produce additional research, that's nice, and we can build a Sanctum to the Whisperers. What is the Sanctum to the Whisperers exactly? And is it better than a fully upgraded research building? It gives us three telepath jobs. Oh, three pele uh, telepath jobs, that's fantastic. Infiltration speed plus 15%, available envoys plus what? Well, obviously I want that then. I wonder if you get different modifiers depending on your covenant, since this is the Sanctum of the Whisperers, I wonder if the Devourer would give you different modifiers or different jobs. I mean, three telepaths is insane though, that's plus 30% resource output on this world. Our lightning is vicious, and they dared enter one of our vassals' territories, which is incredibly annoying, but it looks like the other vassals are just winning up north. We have moved some of our fleets down here. We're winning this section. So it's going to be a long, protracted war, but hopefully our vassals will gain a lot of strength out of this. The Crusaders have kind of just got stuck. No one's attacking them, but at the same time, they can't really attack others because of these superpowers which have formed. Making sure I have will to power active constantly because the, for some reason, the Fallen Empires absolutely hate me. And I've got to be honest, I can't figure out why. <laughs> like, what did I do to anger them so, so badly? I've not gone down the crisis route. I've not done anything that evil. No purging or anything like that. But yeah, for some reason, they absolutely did. Test me. How does one go to war with a fallen em- Oh. So we can go to war with Humiliate. That would give us access to their tech as well. We do need fallen empire tech. Now, of course, we can't claim this for ourselves, which is so annoying because I want these worlds. But that would be great. It would stop them from being able to constantly humiliate me, which is currently causing me to have less influence and less happiness on my world. Again, I'm not 100% sure why they hate me so much. Both unions and the combat as well, actually, have devoured a lot of that federation. The federation is looking like it's in a very, very bad position at the moment. Now we're going to start moving our fleets around. Because we are going to go to war with a fallen empire, at least I hope we can, because, well, the vote is the vote after all, but still, I want our fleets in position. Although we're going to be massively undergunning them, our stuff is going to hard counter them, so 
that's all well and good. Now, what I could have done, and I kind of wish I did, is go with Galactic Contender. This would increase our damage versus the Fallen Empire, whilst also increasing our Diplomatic White. But yeah, they need to go. They keep on threatening us, causing us lose happiness and influence and Diplomatic White, which is all the stuff we need for this run. Now, where are my ground forces? I have a lot of ground forces ready somewhere. Where did I put them? There they are. 6k of Psychus. Do you not have a gateway? I need to start building gateways more in my vassal's territory. Oh, wait, no, neither of you are my vassal. Well, that's annoying. There's a big blind spot there on the left side of the galaxy. Oh, I can't declare war with them even if I declare rivalry. Will it happen at the end of the month? No. Okay, so without making claims, I can't go to war with this group. Oh dear. Okay, so that's fine. I mean, we don't have too long until the endgame crisis anyway, so let's back off. It just means the next time they threaten me, I'm going to ignore them because we are plenty strong enough to just, well, ignore them. So because we're getting so many resources from so many different areas, I am now changing some of the subjects as I slowly get influence to do so, so sadly I can't do it all at once, but I am removing a lot of the basic resource, so I'm just going to start buying them from the market instead, since we do have the galactic market under our control. And instead, I'm going purely into tech. 19k, how strong are you now? Not you, the one just changed. Whoa, okay, that is significantly more than I thought. That's 2,000. Okay, our tech's gonna skyrocket now. Remember, we're only size 300. We've hardly increased in size at all. Ah, yeah, we're at war versus the Crusaders now, apparently. Whoa. I can see why the Covenant just walked in and destroyed them. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Good for me, though, because that's more branch office space. You can't have branch offices on a purifier, so all these worlds are suddenly open for business. Anyway, I'm changing my vassals to give us less of the basic resource, but go to maximum when it comes to research, and I didn't quite realise how insane that is. Yes, our economy is looking a lot worse now, but 21k tech at only size 336. That's mad. I mean, to be fair, we do have 41 branch offices as well supporting us, and I can always start using them for mining and other things. There's a lot we can do to help out with that. In fact, ta-da, there's our minerals. That'll be sorted at the cost of a little bit of uh, unity. And as for food, we just sell less. The only thing really, then, is consumer goods, which we can always simply get more jobs for. Bubbles has just reached 100 years of age. Look how big our bubbly bubbles is. Actually, there's something I need to do as well. You, can you please give me a teacher? Thank you. And there we are. That's unity from jobs. Increased. Yep, definitely want that. Planetary ascension means less empire size. So I've been trying to keep up with that, but it's been a weird balancing act since unity hasn't really been our strong point. So a lot of them are falling behind pretty badly with that. <laughs> no. You attack us. We'll eat you. Our fleets are now looking pretty scary. Over 200,000 fleet power every time they're finished. Our tech is just going absolutely mad at the moment. And because of our massively increased influence, I'm also now able to put down branch offices much further away. So finally, our branch offices have started to move again. Early on, it was very easy to get that, that number very high because a lot of these worlds are double worlds per system or even more than that. And of course, we have our lovely friends really close to us. So it cost very, very little influence. But then, as it got further away, it got more and more expensive, but now we're getting so much, things are looking up. We're a pretty scary force in the galaxy, actually. How strong are we compared to, let's say, the church uh, equivalent? So we are still destroying people in terms of tech, but yeah. The AI is doing pretty well itself. I'm not majorly scared about the crisis, to be perfectly honest. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to it. I'm still very much hoping it's the Scourge, but... Yeah, this has been a surprisingly powerful run. So, I used my first emergency measure, and I've made Nominate Custodian, me, as the emergency measure. I am also calling in a lot of favours. I had to spend all of my resources on that, and I'm still waiting for my influence to recover, so I can then spend these. Although it does look like one of the ones I spent all my money on was going to go with me anyway. That's surprising. It said you weren't going to support me. Well, either way... 
now I've called in five. There's, even if you move away, I've still got a huge lead there. I need to do the same with this one. I thought the church was stronger than it is, actually, which is a shame. My main opposition is the Covenant, who absolutely hate me, so I'm never going to be able to get any favours off them. But with me, and with the church and the free traders deals, I think I should just win this outright. Plus, I do have a relationship with these guys. I am sending in one of our, our envoys, which may occasionally give us favours because of the politics tree, so we could potentially levy a favour against them, even if they hate me. Scraps of power. Our patron, the Whisperers in the Void, seems to have relinquished a fraction of its energy in a fold of the Shroud. The Conclave of Telepath is certain that our close bond will allow one of us to safely absorb and wield this power. A few candidates were selected, but only one of them can be granted the privilege to wield the power of our patron. Who shall it be? Uh, I guess I'm going to go with the One in Charge, Elamano, and yes, our leader's name is One in Charge. It is done. As the power was invested, all those around could feel the weight of its psionic presence. It is powerful and commands respect. They will now be the immortal champion of the Whisperers in the Void. Monthly influence plus one, encryption plus one, operation cost minus 15%. Okay, that's nice for the influence. I wonder if that's replacing the chosen one. The problem is, of course, we are a mega corporation, so we are shifting our leaders from time to time, but still... Even just for now, that extra influence is very welcome. Maybe the scientist would have been, been a, a better option then. No, I think it's alright to stay with that. Well, there's a machine uprising. Thankfully, it seems like, unlike with the others, and actually maybe with the others again, I never really tested it out. You do instantly give the system to the neighbour who's having the uprising as long as, yeah, they're adjacent to it. So that's what we're doing. Just going to take system by system and take it all back for them. They're nowhere near as strong as us, so this is going to be a very short-lived uprising. Still waiting for the crisis. So a couple of things. First of all, the original uprising is almost now dealt with because I've just let my allies deal with it that way. There's no chance of me accidentally getting any of these systems or colonies or anything like that. On top of that, there's another uprising over here I'm just ignoring because A, they're very powerful, and B, they can't le actually leave these systems, so... They can just do whatever they want to do. And finally, it turns out the Chosen One is still in the game. Because now our leader, who was in engineering, I've now moved to physics because uh, energy weapons are going to be useful regardless, armor less so. They are now the Chosen One. So plus 20% research speed, plus they are also a curator, which is plus 15. So a total of plus 35% research speed. They're also now immortal, which means they'll continue to level up. Which is just fantastic. Also, I've noticed I've got the wrong leader currently active. There we go. The caretaker's back, giving us more research from jobs. Everything's looking pretty good. I am now the Galactic Custodian. Which means loads more influence. That's the, honestly the main reason I have this. I can't do any of the endgame stuff right now because the crisis still hasn't spawned yet. But at least with that extra influence we can have even more branch offices, which are just my entire economy right now, which is supporting all of my ships. Which is good. Okay, so good news, bad news, bad news time. Good news, it's the Scourge. This is the one we wanted the most. Either this or the Contingency are probably the two I wanted more than anything. So this is fantastic. So with the Scourge, what we're going to need to do is change our ships from the stuff they're currently using into the pure anti-armor and anti-hull stuff. Which means the plasma cannon. No, that's not right. Oh, the neutron launchers are no longer... Um... Yeah, they're no longer the same type of weapon. They're now torpedoes. Huh. Well, that's interesting. Would it be worth it to have some torpedo users then with us? Well, for now, the battleships I'm going to swap over to the plasma cannons then, I guess, as the next best thing. Yeah, they still do the massive extra damage versus hull and armor. Lances for that, and then regular armor. That's great. So then, what are the bad things then? Well, first of all... It's too early. I can't do half of the custodian stuff I wanted to do, which is a major problem. That's not great. I can't pass anything to do with the endgame crisis. There's even one that you can pass before the crisis arrives and everyone's pretty happy with, but I can't do that because it's going to take far, far too long, and I can't declare an emergency measure for like another year or two. Not great. Second of all, 
the Remnant is attacking us. This is the full Empire, which would be fine normally because my ships are designed to attack the Remnant. But I need to upgrade them all now against the Scourge. So I don't know if I'm going to send any help. The reason this has happened is because of the church over here. Look, it's put down a system right here. I don't know why it grabbed the system. It obviously shouldn't have done that. This is the Fallen Empire that doesn't allow that. And because of that, we're now at war. We could easily crush them. we are only 400,000, but I need to upgrade. The Scourge is a bigger threat. I'm going to ignore that and start upgrading all of my ships, which thankfully won't take too long. I don't have that many ships anyway, compared to usual, and I do have the Juggernaut, which does count as a shipyard as well. So although we only have one proper shipyard, the Juggernaut can also take some of that job. Okay, let's start upgrading. God, that was quick. Situation log updated. Okay, then where's the breach point? That's good, bad. Oh no, the gateways have been taken down. It's good because it's far away from us. It's bad because once this area goes down here to either the Scourge or the Empire, we're going to have difficulty enforcing our will in this area. Honestly, the perfect place, I think, would have been over here. Or over here, to the left or right. This is... I mean, the worst that could have been was right here next to us, so I can't complain too much. Okay, so the game changed as well now that if you destroy the scouts, the attacks still arrive. So we don't need to rush too fast. We just need to keep picking at them. Applied. Yeah, we're going to definitely be able to take out a normal fleet easily. One-on-one, -on -one, we win. But if they gang up on us, we die. We do have Defender of the Galaxy, and if we can hold out for long enough, I can start passing other reforms in the Galaxy, which will give us even more damage versus the Crisis. Also, we are about to level up. Well, soon enough, we'll level up our Federation, which means we'll get Research Mobilization. When that comes into play, we get more Research Speed during the Crisis as well, speeding everything along. Everything along. I'm already getting plus 20%. That's going to increase even more, even with my voice break then. Oh, not already! God damn, Scourge, slow down! Eesh. Wow, look how many fleets are there. Well done, our allies. We're gonna do great versus the um, Empire. See, here's the other thing, though. They're not gonna follow me into war versus the Scourge at the moment because of the Empire attacking us. I am not in a great position. Oh, I might just wait. Ooh, most of the stuff's already upgraded, really. A good half, it's already upgraded. I'm um, very glad I've got the uh, Juggernaut because one star base is very slow. I'm actually thinking that I've made a mistake here and I should have gone with the Mega Shipyard, not the Science Nexus. As much as the research is great, I just can't build ships very quickly. It is weird having the Juggernaut here as a main shipyard. I don't want to move it out of our home system because I want to keep it nice and safe. So all it's going to do is constantly make ships along with our main shipyard, our only shipyard, all of our ships, on the other hand, have moved out and have all been upgraded now, which is great. Also, soon we are going to be able to have a united front, which is the next thing I'm trying to pass over in the council. I just ended the last one early, so it's not going to be too long for that. And I think, yeah, all of the other forces are now following me, so although I don't have direct access to the Federation fleet, it will be following me into battle anyway. Oh, this is going to be so, so weird for a while till we get a bit stronger in it, until we pass some more things. There go our lances. The strike craft are already arriving. Okay, now in range for the smaller weapons, which means they can fire back. Our armor is pretty decent, though. We shouldn't lose too much health too quickly. I thought I was already fully upgraded. Oh, the cruisers. Yeah, I have gave... No, I haven't yet changed the cruisers. Never mind, the cruisers are rubbish. I was going to give them torpedoes, but I ran out of time. Okay, looks like these two are going to go down, but at some losses for us. I didn't notice the second fleet. Okay. A victory nonetheless. I really wish I could have systems right now, so I'd love to put a system down here so we can more easily reinforce. Uh, yeah, that wasn't great. Now, now the other fleets are still heading towards me, though, so I'm going to stay in this system for now, in the middle, until more of them arrive. 
They aren't as strong as me, they don't counter the enemy, that's the main thing, but with the sheer numbers, the enemy are going to be firing at them and not me, so I can be free to do more damage. Now, as for my cruisers, what I want them to be is this, but I didn't get a chance to do that because they were already upgrading something else. Neutron launchers do extra damage with the enemy ship size. I know the small targets are normally more the problem anyway, but still... Okay, Shroud, this really is your chance to not disappoint me this time. Uh, I'll take the risk, I guess. Nope. Outside of the Covenant, they have been... The Shroud has been utterly useless throughout this run. It gave us Chosen Ones once in a while, and that's it. Look at that, that was perfect. Our battleships got to stay back. The swarm of our allies managed to hold them off. I am the ultimate parasite. I am the parasite that actually helps. There's a name for that, but it's not parasite. Don't care, that's what I am. Next swarm, and I've just realised I'm being very, 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 very dumb. Oh, look how cheap they are, because of our empire size. That's neat, isn't it? There we go, extra armour, extra energy damage. Now, our allies will be exhausted by doing this. I'm seeing them melt already. But as long as we can keep on taking out some of these first fleets, we can hold them off long enough. This is working so well. Look how battleships are sitting at the back there. We're doing almost all of the damage here. And they are acting as a perfectly willing shield. Fantastic. How much am I actually losing per time? I lost none. My allies lost, no lost lost loads. I lost none. I didn't realize how useful this was. <laughs> I love the new ship changes. Oh, there's so many more fleets to go, but yeah, we're going to hold them off for a while. The galaxy has come together under my parasitic leadership. Well, it was going well for now, but honestly, this is going to break us. Uh, one more fight, then we're going to have to run away. Do we? Yeah, we do. It'll just wear down these groups too fast. Come on, hurry up and finish off the last of them. Beautiful. Okay, so if you could back off to... Uh, problem is, if they close the borders, we'll end up getting bounced out. But if we stay here, we've got the station on our side. We need to kind of sidestep a bit is the problem. Yeah, let's move here, because that way they might end up going into this territory first. We need them to split up a bit. They have so many more fleets left. Oh my god. Woo, this is going to be a long, hard fight, isn't it? How on earth did they catch up with us? Oh, allies are being crushed because we're not in the fight with them. Just proving that we are the damage dealers here. The enemy does not take any damage. Where'd that one even come from? Where'd the next one even come from? What? Can they jump? Scourge can't jump, can they? They can't... Hmm... Okay, a little bit confused about what exactly just happened there for them to catch up in the first place. Oh, we're all split up now. That's such a bad positioning. Let's keep on distracting them. The best thing with the Scourge is that most of their weapons can be countered by point defense. I'm sure my allies also have point defense and we are loaded with it. So their damage is pretty poor once everything gets going is the point I'm trying to make. I find that the Unbidden are the easiest to burn down health-wise, and the Scourge the easiest to hard counter. Okay, now, once again, we need to back off. One of our fleets wasn't even there. Did I lose anything that time? Still no. The whole shield te uh, technique is working so well. We sit back with battleships, whilst everything else just uh, takes the hits for us. I mean, that's just depressing. Sorry, Space Whales. On the upside, I finally just became the new Federation president, so because of that, I've just extended. It should pass in a second. There we go. I've just extended it for 40 years, which will be until the end of the game, basically. So now I am permanent leader. Yay for that. Can't really do much really more with the fleet right now. Diplomatic vote white, because I am just significantly stronger. Actually, no, no, I am. In terms of um, diplomatic white, I am. Could do it as a challenge later, but we'll leave it as is for now. I really want level 40 already. Sorry, level 4, so we can get that plus 20% research speed, but it's fine. We're not too far off, I think, the United Front passing. 
Yeah, as soon as it gets to the halfway point, I can end the session early, so that's another 20% damage versus the Scourge. A united front has passed, so now we're going with remove the custodium turn limit. We can become the Emperor to end this game with a satisfying conclusion. Why did you go through there and everyone else go through the relay? Well, that was just weird. Anyway, taking over the system because it was just getting very annoying where it's currently placed. There's just so many enemies, but every fleet we destroy is a fleet gone. They don't reinforce super quickly. That they do sadly occasionally get fleets back, but not at such a ridiculous level that's unmanageable as long as we keep on taking them out once in a while. Anything to slow their advance. Okay, they're about to jump. We're hopefully in the middle. Okay, all of our ships are in the middle at least. That was the main thing. Okay, you're heading here. You were heading down a second ago. Where now? Okay, you're going this way. That's fine. My next fleet's almost ready to join us. Every fleet I have it makes the fight go by a little bit faster, which means less allies lost. Plus, once the strike craft get there, the damage is so good. Melt through them. Okay, this time we lost some of our ships. We kind of spearheaded that, and I didn't mean to. It's definitely a lot better when I wait for them to approach us. There you go, strike crafting full force now, so the actual damage is being really unleashed. Still has one more large fleet gone. Running away won't do you any good anymore. You attacked us, we're simply responding. We are crushing them now, and a new fleet is on its way. So I can start being a bit more aggressive. So far, I've just been holding them off. As you can see, they're still so high in number, it's kind of ridiculous. Now we start pushing back, I think we're on a winning streak. Plus, our tech is just going at, just going mad now. I'm actually losing Empire size because now I've finished off all of the traditions. I'm finally... Ascending our worlds, which is decreasing our empire size. In fact, I'll do it twice right now because I forgot to do that. There we are. Which just makes everything cheaper again. So we're on almost 30k research with almost no tech penalty. We invade the territory of the invaders. Starting to realise maybe Colossus would have been better here. I end up going with Transcendent Learning as our final ascension perk because I didn't really know what else I wanted. A Colossus would be able to remove these worlds pretty much instantly. But to be fair, I didn't know what crisis we were going to have and the Colossus would have been useless versus the Unbidden and actually would have been good versus the Contingency as well. Never mind, I should have gone with the Colossus. Okay, huge fleet there. Split fleet there. More of the small fleets. Okay, so we could go for this one. Actually, it might go for us, which would be even better. Just slowly moving forward. One more fleet is almost ready, and I can bring the Juggernaut in whenever I want to. Because remember, the Juggernaut does have this lovely thing, the Strike Command, increasing the speed and damage of our Strike Craft. Two fleets ready at the same time, both half a mil fleet strength. This is the first fleet being created purely from the Juggernaut. Okay, my plan has changed somewhat, because the ending I want is to become the Emperor of the Galaxy and to remain the Emperor forever. Now, there's two ways to do that. First of all, is to make everyone love you and thus not try to undermine you in any way. The second way is to keep a Crisis alive forever, and we are going to go with the underhanded way, because that's the entire point of this playthrough. We are the underhanded little mini-state over here, controlling everything. So what we're going to do is we are going to take out this system here, and then we're going to put all of our fleets in this location, thus keeping a breeding ground for the Scourge. We can simply tell the rest of the galaxy that they're too strong to completely destroy, and honestly, they can't breach through. They, they even struggle with some of the stations, so that's exactly what we're going to do. Remove all the Scourge, which are already here, slowly take them all out just by going around, and then return to this location and claim this system as our own. Our will will be the deciding will of this galaxy. Good. 
One thing I've noticed as well, since the ship change now, where the artillery designed battleships actually stay away and don't slowly head towards the enemy, I've noticed we take far less damage from fights. Which I hope will be true right now, because, ooh, that's scary, and I don't have enough for the military applications here. Okay then, about to lose a few ships, most likely. Actually, that is something I'm curious about. I've not lost ships in multiple fights now. And I think it might be because of what I was just saying. Because they're running away, we're not getting in range of their acid blasts. Only in range of their missiles. And their... See, the missiles there being literally taken out. Their missiles and their strike craft. Both of which we have such an immense amount of point defense. They're not getting past even here. I think I'm getting to the point where I'm just not able to be killed by the Scourge. See? I didn't take damage that fight. Our tech has just eclipsed a crisis. This is legitimately one of the strongest runs I've ever done. Plus 50% research speed society? Since when did it do that? So, I have a little... I have an actual brood queen over here. Slowly making her children. I am now also just... I'm just now able to make the Scourge as well, using that relic. So occasionally I'll just make a little... Mini brood. Ready for fighting. Where is the little mini brood? I thought it was over here somewhere. Was it not? Yeah, loyal brood. 200! What?! Since when did that get so buffed? Oh, because we have the armor increased. No, that's still way bigger than that used to be. That is absurd. What? When did that change? But either way, yeah, the point is these acid blasts are so short range, they're not hitting our ships, and, and we can counter everything else they have. Before they get to them, at least. I'm sure one... One of our fleets will still be destroyed, but still. They have really buffed that relic. Ooh. Swarm weapon attack speed plus 5%. I wonder if that keeps increasing each time I use that. Either way, though. Glory to the Scourge. It really is a case that the fact we move so fast, they can't catch up. I don't, I don't even need the meat shields anymore. Oh no, I did just lose a ship. I just saw one ship go down. One whole ship. Yeah, you can see a little bit of armor's been nicked there. So, yeah, eventually they do get in range, but it takes so long that it's massively now in the favor of our ships, even when we have less forces. You're losing, right? Yeah, you had more fleets there a second ago. Please just stay with me and no one else. Keep going with that fleet over there. Just look at how absurd that is. Plus 270% research speed. Only a increase of 32% in our tech cost. We are getting repeatables done up to three times per year at the moment. For our strike craft. The fleets which were located here were 550k only a year or two ago. Now they're 600k-ish. The power of true tallness. The first galactic imperium. I promise to lead us through this crisis, and in the end, I will return the power to the people. With the Scourge, slowly you're making more and more very large fleets, there is pretty much no chance that our ally, well, our allies, our minions, will ever break through into this Scourge territory because they'll just be obliterated as soon as they do so, and so the idea that the Scourge is this unlimited threat will remain. So on the Council, we have the Covenant and the Free Traders. The Free Traders love me, the Covenant less so. For a second, that was higher than that, so there's going to be an issue there with um, getting enough uh, envoys to support me, but even so, as long as this threat continues, 
there's never going to be the main problem of them trying to overthrow me. I will continue to forever be the Imperium. Yeah, that's a bit broken. Uh, the battleships are just de just destroying them. Honestly, once I have this sorted, I think we can safely say we're done. Can I go to war with these guys? Oh, I can't for any reason. Can I declare rivalry or anything? Insult. Now I go to war. Annoyingly, they have one world infested in their territory. Oh, they don't. Did they manage to get rid of the infester? Oh, never mind. They did have some scourge in their territory, um, but that's been dealt with. They also had a world over here infested, but that got destroyed pretty quickly, so we just took the system out. Neat. Oh, there's a scourge in here. Yeah, that's not going to last long, is it? That's right, galaxy, all together. All of us are needed to protect from the scourge threat forever. Meanwhile, my uh, single fleet over here is just taking out some of the stations. Not very quickly, mind you, but... New technology they are ever so slowly melting them. Many fleets spawn, many fleets melt. Well, there isn't really much else to say at this point. The Scourge have been brought back into only this little section over here. Every time my allies try to get through, they end up getting beaten back. The Scourge keep on respawning and only rarely even try to cross this little threshold. Eventually, they'll break through, but at that point, it doesn't really matter all that much. We are considerably stronger than our second strongest member of the, of the Imperium. As you can see, they are pathetic in both tech and fleet power, and that's going to remain. Our vassals are all loyal to us, which is lovely, except for, I think, one of them. And, yeah, we are the Imperial Ruler. Almost every single world I want, and now as a branch office, I have so much influence, I can put branch offices everywhere. So we are slowly manipulating and destroying worlds behind the scenes, causing all sorts of problems, and the occasional outbreak of rebellion. Uh, these rebels aren't particularly strong, so there's no real threat there even an our vassal can just deal with that anyway so i am going to call the challenge here it was an incredibly fun one we could defeat the scourge like that but this i think makes more sense to leave it like this so i really do hope you all enjoyed this was incredibly fun and way more powerful than i ever imagined a few things i definitely could have done better a lot more aggressive early on i think if we got even one more vassal everything would have been even more but just considerably better later on we could have got even more absurd with our tech but we clearly didn't need it this was a, an end game crisis times 25 100 years early or something like that it was at 2325 and we never left our system our system was always our system and that's all we ever owned a fun challenge, which turned out to just be a very strong build. So I really do hope you've enjoyed. If you have, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff. Helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Stellaris is a series you wish to see continued in the future. This was incredibly fun. And I need to do more challenge runs in the future. Any ideas? Please tell me below. I'm rambling because it's very, very early in the morning, and I'm very tired. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.